Hello, welcome to the Roundhouse Podcast with Paul Solentrop of Wichita State University Strategic Communications. Thanks for listening. We're going to talk women's basketball in advance of Shocker Madness today. We have DJ McCarty and Treasure Job from the Shocker women's basketball team. DJ is a senior guard. She's from DeSoto, Texas. She started 32 games last season, averaged 10.5 points, led the team with an average of 3.5 assists and 1.9 steals. Treasure is a senior guard. She transferred from Emporia State after twice earning honorable mention WBCA All-American honors. She starred on two Class 6A championship teams for Shocker assistant Antoine Scales at Wichita South High School. So Shocker Madness, 6 p.m. Saturday at Coke Arena. The basketball teams will scrimmage. There's a lot of other fun stuff going on. Doors open at 5. Admission is free. DJ and Treasure, will you attend the Tech Nine concert after Shocker Madness? <laughs> um, that's gonna be a hard no for me. <laughs> hard no, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll give him a chance. You know, I've never really heard of his music like that, but I'll give him a chance. Okay, apparently he's quite, or re- at least reasonably prominent uh, from Kansas City. So uh, I probably won't be there either. But I thought I would at least <laughs> give I'd give Tech Nine a little bit of a plug at the beginning of the podcast. If you're going to Shocker Madness, uh, he'll be there and doing his thing, and that's also free. Uh, So there's a lot of new going on at the Wichita State women's basketball program. Several new players, new coach, Terry Nooner. Update fans on Coach Terry Nooner, his coaching style, impressions. DJ, I'll let you go first. Um, So about Coach Nooner, he's very one of the more energetic coaches I've had in my life. He always brings energy. He wants us to match his energy at practice. He's always laughing, smiling. Uh, he's kind of like me. He always has some type of candy in his mouth in practice, so I mean, I do that too. Um, but I think this year we're going to be a more up-tempo, fast, more disciplined team under his system. Okay. Treasure. Uh, for sure, like DJ just said, definitely on the discipline end. Um, he is a very fun guy, but in the same, he's very balanced. So when we're, when we're starting to get a little out of control, he's there to make sure that he puts us back in check and, you know, we stay the course. Okay, when you mention things like that, discipline, putting people in check, do you appreciate that more as a senior than maybe you would have earlier in your college career? Is that something you kind of figure out and build an appreciation for? Um, For me, yes, absolutely, because this is my last year. This is my last hurrah, so um, just making sure that if he's keeping us in check, and then we got to make sure that we keep and hold everyone else accountable. Okay. Um, like Trevor said, like this is the last time we'll probably ever play college basketball ever again. So just finding a different level of appreciation for him, keeping us in check, and him making sure we are about um, are strong about the little things and on honest about the little things. Describe the easy run. I'm told it is every shocker's favorite <laughs> oh conditioning God. drill. No, oh. no, no, no. That easy run was <laughs> not easy. What was it? What like seven minutes? We have yeah. to run around the court with our hands up above our head, and yeah. every time we dropped our hands, or we would consider mall walkers, basically like speed walking. Um, he had like thirty seconds, so we really did like nine, ten minutes. We did because, yeah. and then he places four cones in each corner, and if you touch the cone, then he has thirty seconds. Yes. So. I mean, like, that's just attention to detail. Just yeah. every little thing. That's just how he is. Okay. So it's easy. not easy, though. <laughs> it's not easy. So that name is ironic or, yes. or painful or, or something. Yeah. So this was part of preseason. Did you have, like, a week of conditioning, that kind of thing? Or is this a regular drill that you that you do? Oh, well, we only did it once, and, I, and hopefully that's the only, the only time, time we have, have to do, do that. Uh, we, we didn't really have the best practice. Um, we weren't doing what we were supposed to, so we had to pay the consequences. Goofing off a little bit. So and the easy easy run, run. that's what it was. Okay. The easy run. Very good. DJ, so your senior, uh, you considered transferring after the coaching change last spring. Terry Nooner's description is he said, Give me a chance. Mm -hmm. Uh, he described it as you came to a practice. He was kind of concerned because he remembered it as being a really hard practice. And he said Treasure was there, I think, watching. Um and then the next day you came in and said you wanted to stay. Yeah. Tell us about making that decision. Um, so like he said, that first practice it was we I think we did one drill and then the rest of the time we was just running the whole time. But I think um what maybe made that this make that decision was the fact that he wants everything to be perfect. He wants us to get better. He's not just running us just to run us. He's running us because it's like, okay, this is what you're gonna have to do. He's preparing us for life basically, so Paying attention to the little details, paying attention to what he's talking about. It's just it prepares us for basketball and bigger bigger off the court. So 
Um, I had a conversation with him, uh, basically saying, like, hey, like, I want to stay. Like, I want to ride my last year out with you. I think we can do something special. So that, that was a conversation. Okay. Treasure, so your story is probably well known by, especially by basketball fans here in Wichita. You grew up in Wichita. You won the state titles at South High. You have a long relationship with Antoine Scales. Uh, earning your MBA made meant a lot to you and played a role in you coming here. Tell us about playing in Coke Arena. You'll get a little taste of it Saturday in Shocker Madness. What's that experience going to be like running out that tunnel? There will be fans, all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I haven't done that since high school. Uh, 6A state championships were always held here every year. So every year in high school I got to play here, but I got to play in front of my family, so that meant a lot. And just uh, just it becoming a full circle, being able to do that again for my last you know, collegiate career, I mean eligibility, uh, I mean it means a lot. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. So both of you play very similar positions in the backcourt. DJ, what were your first impressions of uh, of Treasure on the basketball court? <laughs> Goofball. <laughs> um, like not even as a basketball wise. Like the first, I think the first practice we was just like joking and laughing and talking pretty much about like how we're gonna work in the backcourt and you know we look at each other as leaders of this team. So just talking to each other and trying to um, make sure we put the pieces together around us and with us. Treasure, what do you remember about DJ first impressions? Yeah, like she said, goofy. Like she's always cracking jokes, always smiling, always laughing. Uh, but I think with us both being veteran guards and her being in a conference, I'm still learning a lot from her as well because she's been in this conference before. But uh, we just complement each other very well. Um, if she if she's not going doing good, then I'm uplifting her. Vice versa, if I'm off my game, then she's there to keep me encouraged so we can lead this team to the goals we want. So it leads me perfectly into what I was going to talk about next, because DJ Terry said that he was very impressed with the way that you accepted Treasure into the team, mm-hmm. because there's definitely a scenario where senior guard, starting guard says, I, I, don't, I don't like this, you brought in, you brought in somebody new. Uh, what was your attitude about, about welcoming her to the team and playing with her? Just embracing it, I think, coming from where she came from and doing what she did at her um, old college, I think. That's just something to be praised and embraced. So I think putting that uh, in the mix of what we already have as a team, it, it's just going to be a, a lot of fun this year. The treasurer, Antoine Scales, described you as uh, detail-oriented, the kind of person who reads the reads the fine print on a, on a contract that you're handing. Tell us about that. How did you become that type of person, and does that help you on the basketball court? Oh, for sure. So I think it started off with Coach Scales in high school. Uh, he's very... Some people would say military style. And so when I came on my visit, I watched their first practice and Coach Nuna was making them run because they're not paying attention to detail. That's kind of what I was attracted to in a sense. But, um, yeah, so I, just watching film, like I like to watch film. Like I like to break it down. I'm taking notes um, just so that I don't continue to make the same mistakes or, you know, just to get better. Whatever, I'm, whatever I am doing good, I do it better. Or if I'm messing up, then I, I like to correct that stuff. Yeah, there probably are a lot of details in basketball that we sitting in the stands don't pick up on as far as footwork and angles and how many steps and where you set the screen. Give us an example. What's an example of something that maybe a fan could watch when they come to watch the Shockers this season and, and see the importance of, you know, of really being precise, of really being in the, the, in the exact right spot and timing. For sure. Uh, I would say taking charges. I mean, we – our both coaches, we pra- they praise that a lot in practice. So if you're on the weak side, and you're, well, your man is in the weak side corner, and if you're in the midline, and once the strong side drives, and if you're in the right spot at the right time, you're going to force both a turnover and a foul. So mm-hmm. Midline, what's that? Midline, also the middle of the court. Middle of the court, yep. of course. DJ, how about you? Is there a detail a fan could maybe um, pick up on? I would say when we run our plays, there are certain ways we're supposed to cut. There are certain ways we're supposed to certain spots we're supposed to be in. I mean, I can't give it away because there are plays, but right. he's just very focused and detail-oriented. Okay, like, if the ball goes here, you go here. If the ball goes here, you move here. So it's just very detailed plays. DJ Terry described you as you wanted to be pushed, mm-hmm. and that was one of the reasons why you stuck around. What's that mean? 
Um, just wanted to be a better person each day on and off the court, uh, specifically off the court, because, you know, basketball is not, the ball is not going to bounce forever. So I'm just trying to get prepared for afterlife and what I'm going to do afterlife. Maybe it's moving back home, maybe it's staying in Wichita, who knows. But just pushing me off the court to be a better person on the court, be a better leader, be a better um, player, and just picking my head up, picking my teammates up. Okay, yeah, that's a good good topic. You're both seniors. What's next? DJ, what are your, what are your plans maybe at this point? Um... I would say if the opportunity to go overseas is there, you know, I would definitely consider it, definitely take it. But if not, um, either be a GA somewhere or even live in Wichita. It's just endless opportunities right now. I'm just kind of focused on basketball right now. I know I should be focusing on the future, but just trying to take my last season and all. Sure. Now you got you got lots of time. Treasure, how about you? Plans for the future? I just want to say a Texas kid said that she wants to stay in Wichita. That's, <laughs> yes, this, we would let's welcome note that. you. Yes. We would welcome you staying here. Yeah, it's home. It's home, yeah. I've been here five years. And we are trying to get all the Texas people we yeah. can to come to this university. So Absolutely. you can you can be the you can be the good example of someone yeah. coming here and, and sticking Start the around. Go ahead. There you go. There you go. Right. Treasure, how about you? What what do you think might be down the road for you? Um, for me, um, like DJ said, uh, the opportunity presents itself to go overseas, and it's a good opportunity for sure. But with me having a master's, it's going to have to be a fairly well decent, like compensation wise, to go over there. Um, but either begin coaching at this level, Division One, Division Two, honestly, I don't mind because that's where I come from, a D- Division Two product. But either that or go into human resources of some sort. Okay, let's give Division Two some uh, some some attention because I think it's a really good level of athletics, really good level of basketball. Sure. Uh, tell us about it from your perspective. What did you enjoy playing about Emporia State, playing in that level? I mean, the in my especially my conference. We probably arguably the best conference in Division Two. Um, so we played a lot of Division One schools. I played KU. I played Oklahoma State. Uh, I remember I played against Wichita State. It was a close scrimmage, but I played against Notre Dame, Oklahoma University. So, I mean, I played against, I mean, there is a difference, but, I mean, the challenges, I embraced everything, and that's when I knew, like, I knew I couldn't compete at this level, but, I mean, that wasn't the goal for me. I just wanted to be part of a program that best suited me, and Emporia State was that out of high school, so. Sure. There are some excellent Division Two schools in that, in the MIAA, for sure. Uh, tell us about the Shockers. What will fans see when they come out to see Wichita State play basketball? Um, I can't speak from previous the previous teams, yeah. but I mean, our chemistry on the team, we all get along, we're all laughing, we all um, like to hang out with one another. So, I mean, I think that you will really feel that energy from us on the court. Yeah, um, like Trevor said, like, if you're not seeing one of us by ourselves, you're probably seeing some of our teammates with us. We're always trying to hang outside together, um, just build our bond more so so that that translates on the court. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. And you mentioned playing fast, up-tempo. Give us some descriptions there. Um. So, I mean, for me, I know my teammates probably were upset with me a few times, but, like, just shooting a ball, like, if you have a wide-open shot and you turn it down – uh, Coach Nooner is not going to be very happy about mm-hmm. that, and I experienced that <laughs> and I, <laughs> a few times. But, yeah, just taking, you know, a good shot, that the first and good shot that presents itself. Okay. Yeah, taking what the, the defense gives us the best shot. He's all, he always says take the shots that we want and force the defense to take the shots that we don't want. So, like, contested twos and um, just not wide, not good shot, not good shot selection. So, just this is going to be fun. Okay, so I've heard that story that you've been passing up shots at, at times, and that <laughs> no. becomes an issue. Is that that's a that's a real thing? Oh, is that right? No, that that definitely happened once or maybe twice, but I three mean, times. <laughs> yeah, three times. I, you know, I'm, I'm still I'm not saying I'm getting acclimated to the girls, but I mean, I'm still trying to figure out my role here, which I mean, it's not much different from where I came from. So I need to continue to just take that in and do what. Coach Nooner recruited me to do. Here. Okay. And so when when you turned down good shots, the team had to run. Am I understanding that right? Yeah, he made me watch. Yeah. He said, Treasure Job, stand over there, everybody on the line. Put and 33 I, on the court. And <laughs> I watched my teammates run. And, yeah, that, I wasn't – I didn't feel very good about that one. Okay. All right. <laughs> we have six newcomers on the team, Treasure being one of them. Uh, DJ, give us a name that maybe fans should pay special attention to if they're coming out to Shocker Madness. Um, it's kind of hard to just single out one because I think 
all of our newcomers bring something different to the table that all goes cohesive with what we're doing. But I think one to watch out for, I, say, I would say Sierra, um, I don't want to butcher her last name, Mauro, but um, I would say watch out for her. She's very, she's a very, very like stretch forward. Like she can knock it down. She can take it on the dribble. She can get down there and post stuff and bang. So I, I, I would say watch out for her. Sierra, uh, she's a transfer from Miami of Ohio. Am I yeah. remembering that yeah. correctly? Okay. So Treasure, how about you? You've got five newcomers in this group with you. Who's made a good impression? Um, I would honestly say probably our true freshman, Celise, Celise Blow. Right. Um, coach, coach has been on her pretty tough, but I mean, she keeps, she kind of has like a level head and she's learning a lot and she's just taking it all in. She's very, very good with constructive cri- uh, criticism. So I think that would be the person to look out for. And what I heard about her was she came in in the summer in great shape and really mm-hmm. ready to go. And the coaches mm-hmm. were really happy with that. Was that your observation also? Absolutely. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Okay. Especially, so uh, I'm sorry, especially like coming where she comes from, where she was like the number one leading scorer at high school. So she, I think she made it a point to come in and be like, hey, like I want to be ready for the season. I know I'm an uh, incoming freshman, but hey, like that doesn't matter. So that, that's good kudos to her. Okay. Yeah, I've heard good things about her. So, Lisa, another Texan that we will, yep. we'll try to get to, to live here in yeah. Wichita the rest of her life <laughs> with TJ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, returners, tell us who's improving, who might fans take a look at and say is going to play a bigger role this season. DJ, I'll let you take that one first. Um, returners, I would say Anaya Bell and probably Janiah Thompson. I would say their level of production has jumped from last year to this year. And I'll also say like, they're both taking on a role, more so Anaya, but um, they're both taking on a role of being vocal leaders and giving us energy when we need it in practice. Because there'll be times where it's like, it's a little quiet, we're a little dead, maybe we're a little tired, whatever the case may be. But one voice she'll probably always hear is Anaya Bell. And then like, Janaya, she'll follow her. She'll follow behind. Okay. And they're both in their second year in the program mm-hmm. then. So we would kind of, that's the, sometimes the natural progression of things. You're here for a year, you kind of figure out how you fit in, and then mm-hmm. the next year you can contribute more in those ways. Treasure, how about you? Who's who's maybe jumped out at you a little bit for the returning group of Shockers? Um, I would probably say Lala because she, she's kind of that person. You know, you always have that player who does, like, all the dirty work. So she's the one who's always taking the charges in practice and always holding our practice players' uh, best of offensive players. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... I didn't. I didn't watch her much last year, but I really feel like from the returners that she she's something special. Okay, we've got two seniors here. I'll give you an opportunity to pass on some of your your wisdom from the past uh, four years in college. What advice would you give a freshman about college academics, athletics, navigating the whole college scene? Treasure, you go first. Um, I would probably say um, time management. That's a that was a big thing for me. Um, you just you just gotta f- figure out a time to balance schoolwork, uh, your workouts, practice, and still have time to fit in like your social life. Like I mean, yes, you're here for basketball in school, but I mean, you still gotta f- have some time for yourself so that it's just not a long dragon season and you're not going through mental problems or anything. So it's just time management, just to figure out that balance for you. Do you have time management tips? How did you get in a good, you know, in a good in a good routine? Uh, I'm not a procrastinator, so if I'm getting homework assignments, I'm working on them right then and there. I don't like waiting last minute because with basketball, I feel like we have something every day, every day. and stuff pop up pops up. There's no 24 hour notice, so coach says you need to be here at this time, and you got to be there. Then if you have an assignment due, and you already knocked it out, you have you have no worries. DJ, advice for a college freshman? Um, I would say the big one, biggest one is taking care of your mental health. I think living in the times that we do today, like there's a lot of hate going around on social media or if you don't do something in a game, you might get a DM or blah, blah, blah. But just taking care of your mental health and knowing that there's always going to pe- be people around you to help you and be people that want to see you succeed. And then another one I have is always listen to your coaches. <laughs> always listen to your yes. coaches. Always That's listen to your coaches. Even if you think they're wrong, <laughs> Just do what they say. Don't even if they tell you to go run through a brick wall. Just, just always just listen to them. You know, always listen just to Just do it. That that is another thing. Coach Nooner, he always tells us. He was like, if there's a battle between y'all running, making the times, and me stopping, I'm gonna always win it. So yeah. until you make the times, we're not gonna stop. Yeah, so, so yes, always listen to your. Do coach. what they say. 
Okay, we'll wrap it up. Favorite movie or TV show? What would you recommend for the people out there to, to check out? Oh. You want me to go? Yeah, you go first. <laughs> um, so I just finished this show called Swagger. It's kind of based off Kevin Durant's personal life. Um, I would say that's a good good show to check out. It's on Apple TV. Okay, Apple TV, yeah. all right. Treasure? Um, I mean... Okay, so the show called Insecure. It's oh, that's a good yeah. Ooh, so that's a good it's just I mean, they're young, it's about young adults just trying to figure out life. They just starting or trying to figure out a career path for them, and they just I mean, they go through realistic situations. So okay, I it's called it's Insecure. Insecure. Where yes. do you see that? I think it's on Star. No, it's on uh, Netflix. HBO and Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. HBO and Netflix. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. There's a lot going on out of Wichita State this weekend. We've got volleyball on Friday night, all kinds of Shocker Madness stuff going on Saturday. Doors open at 5, Shocker Madness starts at 6. There's baseball, softball scrimmages. There's volleyball again Sunday afternoon. DJ and Treasure, thanks very much for your time. Thank Thank you for having us. Hi, this is Rick Muma, president of Wichita State University. Check out the latest episode of the Forward Together podcast. Each episode, I sit down with different guests from Shocker Nation to celebrate the vision and mission of Wichita State University. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for listening to the Roundhouse Podcast, courtesy of Wichita State University Strategic Communications. We encourage you to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can find more Roundhouse content at GoShockers.com. Bradshaw into Wingate. Wingate's going to dribble it a couple of times and throws it in the hands of Kuznar. Threw it away. Kuznar to Ryan Martin for the dunk. The Shockers are going to the Sweet 16. It's all over. The Shockers up seven. Three seconds. Two. Jeffrey by Smith is no good. Wichita State to the Sweet 16.